Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a little while since I've posted a video, but uh, today we're gonna be working on my 1996 Gary Fisher. You may have already seen some videos on this bike, but uh, now I have the bike down to 10.9 kilograms with the pedals, which is I think 24 pounds. So it's a nice, light, quick bike right now. It handles great, accelerates really good. It does have very limited gear range. We have only I think it's 11 to 28 on the back and a 32 in the front so this wouldn't work for any kind of like you know mountainous stuff or a lot of a lot of steep especially longer climbs but here in Florida we don't have that so it's totally perfect in fact uh, a couple weeks ago I did the 12 hours of Santos and I only did the three hour race of that event and uh, it was first of all it was super fun really really awesome yeah, I can't wait to do it next year, in fact. But as far as the bike, as far as the gearing, it was perfect. It was like totally fine. I did spend a lot of time in that biggest cog in the back, uh, but it was totally adequate. The bike itself was good, you know? It's an old, old mountain bike. It does have its limitations. Um, first of all, we only have, I think, around 50 millimeters of travel on the fork. That was kind of one thing, but it, that wasn't even that big of a deal. Probably the worst thing about the bike, or what could use the most help in my opinion, was the brakes. Not that they're not strong enough, but with these canning weaver type brakes, I found my hands were actually getting very, very fatigued to the point, you know, first of all, I had to use two fingers. Mostly I'm braking on the back. I had to use two fingers, not one. So now you only have three fingers holding the, the grips, you know, and my, my hands were just getting very fatigued. It almost felt dangerous at some points, kind of navigating the technical sections with, with such fatigued hands. So I think that would be, uh, the biggest thing that this bike is lacking is um, the fact it doesn't have modern hydraulic disc brakes. So anyway, we're not fixing that today. What we're doing today is I have, <clears throat> I have this fork. This is a Fox F100 RLT air fork. So I'm going to try to fit it onto this bike today. I don't really know if it's going to work or not but I think it should. Um, this is an air fork. This is, for best I can tell, from 1990, no, excuse me, 2006. This bike's a 96, so it's a 10-year newer fork. Um, I don't know if it's really gonna be an improvement or not, but it's just been kind of sitting there tempting me to, to do this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. I don't know if it's gonna be lighter, I do know it has more travel, about twice, about 100 millimeters versus 50. Also, I know it's quite a bit longer. So, if you take a look at this and kind of eyeball the, if you take a look at it, you can see that this fork is a lot longer. I mean, it's, it is probably a good 60 plus millimeters longer than this factory fork. So what that'll do effectively is it'll lift the front end up and it should increase the, or rather decrease, the effective top, uh, effective uh, head tube angle. So this one actually, I measured it with my phone just using one of those angle apps, put it there and I, I figured that it was getting about 71 degrees head tube angle. So maybe this will slacken it out a little bit. You know, the, uh, the common knowledge is that'll make the bike handle descents a little bit better. But what I kind of fear is that it could actually um, make the bike less fun. You know, it's going to be more slack, less, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time just kind of goofing around the, around the neighborhood. So I don't know if this is a good idea or not. So, but anyway, we're going to try it today. We're going to stick it on or to try to anyway, and, uh, just see how it goes. I think, uh, I think the brakes are going to work. I also had to buy this because it's a cantilever brake. We are going to need to handle the cable somehow. So I bought this for about 10 bucks. You know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this wheel off also before I do anything else. Uh, one other thing, I don't know, I don't remember if I had showed you guys on the previous video, but I did install these non-quick release uh, axles or skewers. Um, these take, I don't know, they save you around 50 grams in total, front and back. And I think they look nice too. I think I did have this on my other video, actually. 
I know the trend is kind of right now, light bikes don't matter, weight doesn't matter that much, but I just really like a light bike. I think it feels nice. To me, it feels nice riding a light, lightweight bike. It's very snappy and responsive. I don't like, I don't really like riding heavy bikes, which is kind of a conundrum for me because I'm thinking about getting a new mountain bike for myself and light means expensive. I mean, uh, I know I'm really deep into this bike hobby, but I still can hardly see justifying spending a thousand plus dollars, even more than a thousand on a bicycle. So if you're talking that thousand dollar range, I mean, you're not getting a light bike basically from, from what I'm seeing, even, even on the used market. So uh, yeah, it's kind of a conundrum for me. I want a light bike, but I don't want to pay light bike money. These brake cables, everything here is all original except for the pads I replaced. And I haven't messed with them because they've just worked fine. But maybe with this new fork I'll be forced to uh, update the cables and stuff. We'll see. Okay, that should be good. There we go. I used a bungee cord to kind of strap the bars to the frame, get them out of the way. One great thing about this bike is just how you know, how scratched up it is already. The frame is very scratched up all over the place. And normally that's not what you consider a great thing about a bike, but it has a couple of advantages. Number one, you can do stuff like this. You don't worry about it too much. Number two, having a bike that's kind of rough looking as this makes you feel okay about parking it outside the grocery store as I do often. You know, if I did buy one of these, what I consider expensive, giant mountain bikes, I have to get a mallet, I think, um, I would be so scared to park it and lock it up that somebody would steal it. Whereas this, you know, I like this bike and I'm starting to like it more and more, but I don't have but $150 into it or something like that. So anyway, let me get a mallet, be right back. All right, so as I was saying, if this bike got stolen, I'd be very sad, but you know, It's not that big of a deal. Oh wow, it's had the original sticker still on, on, a, on the inside. I've never taken these fork, this fork off before. Wow, look at, look at the difference between these two forks. Quite a massive difference in height, in size overall. Makes me kinda not sure if this project or this task is really gonna work or not. I mean, the height different here is massive. This fork here actually is not a coil fork. I took it apart one time, I uh, opened this cap up. It has like these foam, what I think of what they call isolators. So yeah, th this one's, oh, I think it's heavier. Wow, that'll be cool if we actually lose weight. Of course it has the brake pads on it right now. Um, yeah, anyway, it's gonna be quite a change I think. Okay, I've ran into pretty much the first kind of major problem of the day, and I, I knew in the back of my head this was going to happen probably, and that is the, the, that the crown races here are different. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure. Yeah, is that a crown race even on this one? I'm not really sure, but this one definitely will need to come over onto this fork. Um, the difficulty there is I don't have a crown race removal tool. I have in the past been able to kind of chisel them off with old screwdrivers and such. Uh, obviously that's not the best way to do it. And this one looks like it, it would be doable, but this one doesn't really have much of a lip to work on. I will give it a try, but if it's too much of a struggle, I may just actually finally order the tool. So that's the first thing I kind of ran into. Oh, by the way, I did check the weight on them both and they're exactly, when I took the brakes off, they're exactly the same weight. So it was uh, 1.55 kilos, that's at 1,550 grams. Okay, rather than even try, I'm going to go ahead and order the correct uh, crown race removal tool. Um, also because I need to find the pipe that I can use to install it and I don't have that either. So. Uh, that you can just get at the hardware store, but I don't have one with me. So uh, the only thing I'm going to do today is actually move those posts from the one fork to the other. That is very loose. Yeah, those, oh, in fact, this is just plastic. 
it was just a cover. Now, if worst comes to worst with this braking situation, this fork does have disc brake mounts. So I could run a disc brake on this front wheel. And I do have, I think a 26 and a 27.5 with discs. So I could do that. I, was playing, I wasn't hoping to do that right now. I thought maybe later I would try that. But anyway, let's just try to make this work first. So let's see if we can get this off of here. Okay, good. That, that's coming off nice and easy. Very good. Now this is interesting. This had a little plate here. Uh, I don't really think that's necessary on this one because it already has the hole for the uh, spring. Let me know in the comments what you think about these plates. I, honestly, I don't think I need it. I'm not going to put it on. Well, maybe I'm wrong though. On the other hand, there is like a, a recess here. Maybe it maybe it's kind of can work as a washer. I'm not really sure. I'll stick it on. Let me know in the comments if it should be on or not. All right, that'll be good for now. Um, yeah, I think we're done for today. But with the magic of video, you don't have to wait. So, okay, we're back and I bought this bearing splitter tool off eBay. It's about $7 shipped new. And the idea is that, you see this has a very small edge here. It, the idea is that it gets up underneath a bearing and then you tighten it down and it lifts it up. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. I don't really know if it's gonna work, of course. So that should go like that. I'm gonna to try to keep some pressure on it, like that. So I can, so it doesn't move. And of course, I also don't wanna damage this, uh, this uh, crown race. <laughs> That's a big thing too. Mm. So it, seem, it seems possible to me that you could also damage your bearing this way if it just smashes it rather than pops it off. So I'm trying to be really cautious of that. Okay, it's getting tight, but I'm not seeing any lifting yet. Or how about this? Let's just try the good old hammer and screwdriver method. <laughs> okay, but there it is. I can actually kind of touch on it with the screwdriver tip. So let's give it a try. So now that the gap has gotten slightly larger, I'm going to switch to the other side, which is even way harder due to this thing. But my confidence is going up because it is working. Sorry about all the noise. At this point, I'm very confident this is going to come off safely. There we go. Now, most critically, we have to make sure we didn't damage the race any. No, it looks totally clean and clear. Thank goodness. Now, going back over to the fork we're going to, we're going to need to take that race off and then put this one on. And it's gonna be, of course, the same process for this crown race. Now this one I think is gonna be easier. And in fact, I'm gonna try, try to let you guys see that. I'm gonna to attempt to use that tool on this one because this one has a good under part, under lip that I think, I think we can grip onto. Okay, so I'm tightening it down. I'm not sure, but I think it's already starting to lift off a little bit. So my conclusion for this uh, bearing splitter tool, well, on a fork that ha uh, a crown race that has a lip under it, it works good. So in some cases this can be quite useful, but 
like on the other fork, didn't really work out. So I'm gonna pull it back off and the, bear, the race is definitely raised now. So I think, yeah, I think now at this point, I'm just gonna tap it off again with the screwdriver and hammer. There it goes. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to use the screwdriver tap tap method once again. Be very careful method once again, but uh, should work. I have done it before. You just have to take it really slow. And of course, you're gonna tap up here, not on the race itself. Like I said, these aren't actually that tight. They don't really have to be. See how it's moving already with just a really light tap of the hammer. That's not much force at all. That's barely any more than the weight of the hammer itself. And uh, when I'm tapping it, the entire, entire, entire crown is moving a little bit. Um, what would be good is to have a support under here or have this in a vise would be even better. I don't have a, a vise. Hmm. Okay, so let's try this. I put the fork in the bike stand, bike repair stand. It's definitely comfortable standing here. Um, yeah, let's give that a try. Hopefully it holds tight enough. I definitely like using the uh, pipe better. And I could, of course, wait and go get one from the hardware store, but I'm kind of impatient. I really want to get this thing going. I have a ride I'd love to do tomorrow. Shoot. And I'm just on my lunch break right now, so I don't have time to uh, go to the hardware store and do this. So now I'm just gonna, you know, very carefully go all the way around to make sure the whole thing the whole entire uh, crown race is completely touching down on the fork. And if it is, then you can be pretty confident that it's seated completely. I'm not seeing any daylight, so that's a good sign. And you can also, like I said, even kind of feel when it's touched down. Although after you do it a handful of times, I'm gonna rotate this to, get a little bit better access to the back. After you do it a few times, you're not really, you're not feeling the difference anymore, so it's a little harder to tell. When you feel that first whack where it feels different, that's when you really know something has changed. Now I think all of them are, all the sides are mostly seated, so I'm not really feeling a big difference, so it's harder to tell. You have to be very careful with each blow. You don't wanna get the screwdriver onto the race, obviously. That's where the ball bearings are sitting and they don't like anomalies in the surface, of course. Okay, I'm just, uh, I already got the bottom bearings packed with grease and everything, now I'm just doing the top. The condition of the bearings and the bearing races are actually really pretty good on all surfaces, so I, I have a feeling, and all, even the grease was not too bad, so I have a feeling maybe this has been re, or it's been serviced at some point in its life. Okay, let's slide the fork in here for the first time. I have a feeling this uh, steer tube is, steer tube? Yeah, steer tube is much taller than the other, so it may have to be cut down some, which I really don't have time to do right now. Actually, oops, we have a skirt down here that has to stay outside of the crown race that kind of keeps the dirt out actually it does keep the dirt out but actually that's not that high uh, it may actually be just fine because of course you need the stem but we also need on this build this for the cantilever brakes so that'll go on there I think just like that and then uh, then I 
think we could go ahead and put the handlebar back on. Let's see about doing that. Yep. Oh, that's not bad at all. Awesome. Then, oh wow, that's, that's not going to work. <laughs> that's way too close. Wow, that's not good. And you definitely can't do it down here. Okay, well, there's no way that's going to work. There's nowhere for that. Can you see what I'm talking about? There would be nowhere for the brake cable to, to go. I mean, well, we may be going with a V brake on the front then, in that case, which I don't think I have here. Anyway, let's go ahead and bolt this thing up. Take this off of there. That's not going to work unless I can think of some way to make it work. That's going to go right on there. That is a little bit longer now than I would like. Okay, got everything together. I'm going to uh, just tighten this up right now. Basically, I think I'm going to have to get either a V-brake or a front disc brake because, uh, I mean, what I would need, I thought about it a little bit more. Where did I even put that? Here it is. This could go up there. But what we need is one with a longer neck that went like way down here somewhere, a lot longer neck. And then I think it would work. But really, do I want to buy another one of these with a different neck, if I can even find one, when I could just put a V-brake on it and be done with it? That's probably the route I'm going to go. Okay, I just screwed the wheel on. Now I'm going to take, take the bike off the stand, put some weight on it, get everything uh, fixed up here completely. But this will be the first look at how it looks with the new fork. Whoa, that actually looks super rad. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Is that open or that's open, right? Hmm. Feels kind of a bit more bouncy than I'd want, so I may need to adjust the, the properties of the fork. All right, all done. So cool. Ha ha. I'm going to go ride it around the yard. Okay, just came back from a little ride around the yard, the backyard. Uh, first impressions, <laughs> somehow it makes the bike feel bigger. Maybe that's because the front end is a little higher. Feels like the bike is bigger. Um, definitely has a lot more front suspension travel. I think I need to make it rebound maybe a little slower. I'm not really an expert on that, but Anyway, definitely looks cool. But anyway, we're not finished. Uh, I want to cut that a shorter. I want to obviously get some brakes on it. But before that, before I clean up, I need, I want to check what is my effective head tube angle now? Because we started off at 71 degrees. Okay, 292 minus 360, or is that how you do it? 360 minus 292, 68. Holy moly. We have 68 degrees now. I actually, I guess, there we go. So I guess uh, that much taller of a fork really slackened it out a lot. Now we're at 68 degrees. I could tell it was handling quite different. It felt very big and uh, you know, it, it, a little, it just felt longer and bigger and everything. Anyway, let's get the brakes on, which will be another day and um, talk about it more then. Okay, welcome back. It is another day. And I think at least the, where we left off was I didn't have any brakes for this bike. And um, I want to get some nice ones. I'd love to get some like XT components or something like that. But I'm actually going on a trip uh, in about less than a week. And I'm going to bring this bike up to Georgia. So I don't have time to find a good deal on uh, nice brake, V brakes. So I found these on Amazon for like $12 shipped. The CNC, whatever they are, set. Comes with the, the two sides of the V-brake plus the, the noodle and the bolts. So I'm going to attempt to install those. In addition, in my bits and bobs uh, bin, I found this wrong side. This is the uh, right side brake lever, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work using it upside down on the left side. So I'm going to try to adapt that too. Again, I would love to get some higher quality everything here, but I just have to get this going for the weekend. So that's that. The only thing I'm missing now, the only, the only thing I'm missing now is some cable housing, but 
I found this old, old, old uh, handlebar setup. This is actually kind of a funny story if you've been watching the channel for a long time. This is from uh, like maybe 2016 when I built the giant a ATC, ATX, uh, mountain bike to road bike conversion. This is the originally wrapped, originally configured bars from that build. When I came back from Switzerland, I just threw them in the bike bag and here they are. So I think this cable here will, this cable housing is really what I need. I think it'll be long enough. So I'm going to try to go ahead and harvest this housing. I actually have a new correct cable. Although, yeah, I'll need to use a new cable because it's will be the wrong end type for the, uh, the road shifters. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to try to use this housing. I have the right cable and then we'll see where, where we can go with that. Okay, Harvest did the brake cable. It looks good and fine. I think it's going to be long enough. And uh, let's go ahead and install these, the CNC brake, V-brakes, V-brake, V-brake calipers. Okay, that will go on like that. You know what, it's being kind of a pain to line up this little plate with the other hole, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. I don't even really know if I was supposed to use it anyway. Let me know in the comments. So we're just gonna take that plate out. Yep, that makes that a lot easier. With, uh, with that plate off, the this little pin goes right in there, whereas before I really couldn't get it to line up through both of them correctly. Yes, that's working. You see that? All the way tightened down and no rubbing. All right, so great. This side's good. Okay, I got the new brake levers on, brake lever on. I got the cable, I got everything here. I'm not really sure about this this noodle, I think it's called. It's like, I don't know, you're supposed to pre-bend it or what? But I do have all of these, so I might I have like a little kit I bought a long time ago. I might use one of those. Let's see, maybe, maybe you're supposed to bend this just by hand. Actually, I think that's working. So I might just go with that. All right, that looks pretty decent. So that'll go like that. I had a heck of a time with this fork actually. Um, the lockout wasn't working. I did some research. I learned a whole lot about air forks that I didn't know, which was, I didn't know anything. So I learned a whole lot about air forks. Uh, I did a lot of stuff, but I'm gonna save that for another video because that was like a big, big story and it's not even done. The story isn't over. So that'll be maybe the next video or one of the upcoming videos where I talk about my fork drama. It's working now, everything works fine now. Lockout works, everything works. Because at first the lockout didn't work and that was like, man, it made it really no fun to ride. I've been riding around for the past few days with no front brake and uh, the, the worst part was the, the bobbing fork. Just, you know, you couldn't accelerate. Like every time you try to accelerate or climb a little hill, it's just like bobbing. Really made the ride pretty miserable, but now I got that fixed, at least temporarily. Temporarily, that's a theme here. Surprisingly, you don't have to have these like super tight. I really don't like the look of this. Like this looks strange to me, but I, we'll see if it works okay. First pull. Hey, it kind of, kind of works. That's great. Both of them are actually moving kind of similar. Uh, we do need to put more cable that way though. I can see that already. By the way, I got a new watch. It's the uh, Garmin 245, excuse me, Garmin Forerunner 245 running watch, but you can use it for biking and what all, all different kinds of activities. Uh, probably I'll eventually do a review on that too once I get to know it better and have more to say, but just, I just got it today and I'm really liking it. Really am, it's cool. Oh, and one more thing before we sign off. Let's check, let's check out what this bike weighs uh, now that we've done all this work, is it heavier or lighter? Before it was 10.9 kilograms. So let's see what we have now. We have different brakes and uh, different forks. Yeah, 
and we can make it a little bit lighter yet because we can cut down a little bit on this steer tube uh, but not too much that won't make a big difference so now we're exactly at 11 kilos so we've actually gained a little bit of weight maybe 100 grams something like that not sure where or why oh i actually do know why because um, earlier even though i measured the earlier even though i measured the forks to be the same weight that was before i oiled these up they were really really pretty much empty of oil so uh, now these probably have <laughs> close to 100 grams of oil so that's probably the difference now the bike is 11 kilograms so it's a little bit heavier okay so at this point the bike is pretty much done i'm just going to tune up these this uh, brake caliper a little bit not bore you with that and uh, i think i'll just leave you with some nice photos of the bike if i can take some later on today and uh, I think that's about it. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one.